Thank you, Goodfoot. Giving us some free entertainment today. Yeah. All right, if we can get everyone. the king, but King Jesus. No kings, no royalty, no tyrants, no dictators, no ayatollahs, no czars, no kaisers, no fuhrers, and no oath breakers. Our founding fathers, their intent was not to establish a royalty and I see happening today in America what I would call the return of the divine right kings. If you're having a problem accepting some of the things they're doing, they will help you by stuffing it down your throat. That is not what our founding fathers intended. They intended for us to have a constitutional republic if you can keep it. That was the original intent, was the foundation principles of government that was bequeathed to us by our founding fathers. Now, I don't know how many of you know this, but do you know that the Bible actually addresses the issue of self-defense? Yes, it does. In Luke chapter 22 at verse 36, it says, Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. The power of the purse and the power of the sword are two essential elements and rights that our founding fathers never wanted us, we the people, to give up. The Second Amendment, as you well know, though many do not, are emphatically written in the Bill of Rights. I call that section of that precious document, our Constitution, the Bill of Handcuffs. Why? Because the government is supposed to be chained up in the chains of the Constitution. And keeping it on notice of this, keep your hands off such rights as the right to have and bear arms. And the New Hampshire Constitution in Article 2A explains the original intent, I think very well, in defense of oneself, one's family, one's property, and if called upon the state. These are not privileges conferred upon us by whim or fiat by some tyrant who opposes us or wants to remove them when they're having a bad hair day. And they have a lot of bad hair days, don't they? when he desires that we should be peasants without so much as a pitchfork to defend ourselves with. But remember that the Declaration of American Independence recognizes and publicizes the essential freedom and liberties as unalienable rights that we are endowed with by our Creator. That means from our conception, not an act or even approval by a government. It's not the Constitution, which I love, incidentally, that gives me the right to bear arms and defend myself. Now let me repeat that because many people are shocked. It is not the Constitution that gives me the right to bear arms to defend myself. It's Almighty God who does. The God-given right. Government is not supposed to interfere with these unalienable rights. Government has instituted as it says in the Declaration, instituted by men to secure, and in a sense, ensure these rights, not to meddle with them, subvert them, parcel them out, or God forbid, deny them in any way. As you see me here today, dressed as one from the founding era, be reminded of what the founders intended for me and for you. Is their legacy, which is our inheritance, what we have today, 
Or has it been stolen from us, or have we given those rights away? I'm sure they'd be standing with us. I am a direct descendant of a Minuteman who was on the Lexington Green that April morning, against all odds. Seems like we're against all odds these days a lot, aren't we? He refused to lay down his arms. He refused to give in. He refused the ungodly, illegitimate, and unlawful order of tyrants, and so do I. What about you? I am sure that if Samuel Adams were here with us today, or John Adams, or John Hancock, or Paul Revere, or James Warren, or John Stark, no, John Stark is here with us today, at least by statue, or John Sullivan, or John Langdon, what would they be saying to you? Well, I would say that what I am saying to you today is what they would be saying, because I'm repeating, actually, the words that they said. Just say no to the tyrants. Our rights are unalienable. They cannot be sold, stolen, given away, or not be infringed. Do you hear us, D.C.? Do you hear us here in Concord? You will uphold your constitutional oath or else. Now these very same tyrants who would disarm us and prevent us from our God-given right to self-defense want to tax us to pay for their bodyguards to protect them while leaving us defenseless. Well, here's what I say to them. Exercise your Second Amendment rights. Be armed and defend yourself and we'll do the same. Now in the limited time that I have here today, I've chosen not to go further into the Second Amendment provision such as the well-regulated militia which is necessary for the defense of the state. It's important to know that what the original intent of the founders was there too and the restoration of the militia is essential if we would have a free state. Even the well-intentioned may think that they can defend me and mine better than I can myself. I strongly disagree. History has proven that the defenseless get trampled on, not only figuratively, but literally, and every opportunistic dictator must first disarm the honest and law-abiding before enslaving and controlling them. Now, I mean no violence or harm to anyone. Is there anyone here that means harm or violence to anyone? I don't think so. I'm a freedom-loving freedom Christian New Hampshire American patriot. I will not be stood upon, put upon, or any other kind of fill-in-the-blank upon, not lied to, cheated of, or ripped off of what the Lord intends to be mine. Now, are you shocked at this militant kind of speech. I want to tell you about the preachers of the Black Robe Regiment that I represent today as a 21st century expression. The preachers of the War for American Independence spoke this way and they encouraged the birth of a new nation, America, with the greatest rights, liberties, freedoms, and yes, responsibilities that the world has ever known and ever seen. Our third president, it's going to be a test after this. I hope you know who that is. Who? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Thank you. He said, Honor, justice, and humanity forbid us tamely to surrender that freedom which we received from our gallant ancestors and which our innocent posterity have a right to receive from us. We're not just here today for ourselves, are we? We're here for our posterity, for our children, just the way that they fought in those days, not only for themselves, but for their children, and yes, even 